Hello everyone, hope you all are doing great. Welcome to the stomach series. In this series, you will find the stomach's gross anatomy, histology, its development, and also about the clinical anatomy. This is the first video of this series and in this video we will explore the basics the function of the stomach the gastric emptying time its location its size and capacity and also its shape so without further ado let us get started stomach is the most dilated part of the gi tract which intervenes between the esophagus and the duodenum the stomach is also called the gaster, a Greek word which means the belly, which gives rise to the word gastric, which is commonly used to describe structures associated with the stomach. Now, what are the functions of the stomach? The stomach acts as a reservoir of food, and through repeated churning motions, it transforms the food into the chyme which has the uniform consistency. Stomach helps in digestion of carbohydrate, proteins and fats. It secretes hydrochloric acid which makes the environment acidic and it also secretes pepsin which in this acidic environment breaks down the protein into proteases and peptones. The hydrochloric acid also protects the stomach against bacterial invasion. Stomach also secretes abundant mucus, which again protects the gastric mucosa from the hydrochloric acid. In addition to the digestion of carbohydrate, proteins and fats, stomach also allows some absorption of the water, glucose, alcohol and few salts. Then um, waste products of blood such as urea, ammonia and opium in case of poisoning are also excreted by the gastric mucosa. Stomach also secretes a hormone called gastrin which regulates the secretion of the hydrochloric acid and pepsin. Then uh, parietal cells of the stomach also secrete intrinsic factor of castle that helps in the absorption of vitamin B12 by the small intestine. So these are the functions of the stomach. On an average food is retained in the stomach for about 3 to 4 hours but this duration varies on the quality of the food. Carbohydrate rich meals tend to empty quickly while the protein rich foods empty slowly and fatty meals are retained in the stomach for a longer period of time. Now let us see where the stomach is situated. We know there are nine regions of abdomen, the right hypochondrium, the epigastric region, the left hypochondriac region, the right lumbar region, umbilical region, the left lumbar region, right iliac fossa, hypogastric region and finally the left iliac fossa. So these are the nine regions of the abdomen and among them stomach lies obliquely in the epigastric region, left hypochondriac region and the umbilical region. The stomach is about 25 cm long or about 10 inches. And the capacity of the stomach is variable. At birth, the capacity is only 30 ml, that is 1 ounce. In adults, the capacity is 1 to 1.5 liter on average, and that means 1000 ml to 1500 ml. Now, there is an interesting fact that even when the stomach is empty, the fundus of the stomach contains air, known as the fundic gas, which is approximately 50 ml. We can clearly see these gases in the X-ray abdomen. You can see the fundic gas here. Here is another one. Then this is another one. You will find these gases normally in all the X-rays of the abdomen. So these are the fundic gases. Now you may have a question. Where are these gases coming from? This gas is actually aspirated into the stomach when we eat, drink or swallow saliva. Additionally, activities such as talking while eating, then drinking carbonated beverages or chewing gum can increase the amount of the air swallowed. This is number one source of the fundic gas. There is another source. The GI tract undergoes various chemical reactions during the digestion process, leading to the production of gases such as carbon dioxide, methane and hydrogen. These gases accumulate in the fundus of the stomach as a byproduct of microbial fermentation of undigested carbohydrates or other food components. So this is how the fundic gas is produced. Interesting, right? Now let us look at the shapes of the stomach. 
in cadaver the stomach is sickle shaped in the living the stomach is mostly j shaped clinically the stomach presents three types of shapes number one is asthenic or normal type the longer limb of the j is slightly oblique in this case and then we have the hypostenic type in this case the longer limb of the j is mostly vertical these people are susceptible to suffer from gastric ulcer usually they are present in thin and tall persons and then we have the hypersthenic type in hypersthenic type the longer limb of the j is very oblique these people are prone to develop duodenal ulcer they are usually present in the short and stocky individual so these are the different shapes of the stomach normally we have the sthenic or normal type then we have the hypostenic type and then finally we have the hypersthenic type now why people with hypersthenic type are more prone to develop duodenal ulcer the oblique shape of the hypersthenic type can result in more acid drainage from the stomach into the duodenum and thus prolonged and more exposure of the duodenum uh, to the acid may lead to duodenal ulcer and in case of hypostenic type we have already described people are more prone to develop gastric ulcer because this vertical shape leads to delayed gastric emptying thus prolonging the contact time of the gastric mucosa to the corrosive acid and thus it increases the likelihood of the mucosal injury and ulcer formation so that concludes our explanation of the location function shape and the capacity of the stomach please join us in our next video where we will cover uh, the gross anatomy of the stomach including the presenting parts and the subdivisions do not forget to give a like share and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating contents thank you for watching and see you all in my next video till then take care and goodbye